What's up students, it's your boy PGT and welcome back to class. In today's class I'll be sharing with you the results of my ultimate grain experiment. Many people keep asking me which grain is the best grain for cultivation, so I've decided to put all the grains to the test to see how they stack up against each other and how they compare. The goal of this experiment is to find out what the effect of the grains have on mycelium during colonization, which ones are going to colonize the fastest, what the effect the grains would have when it comes to fruiting, and uh, what's the best overall grain you should be using? Stay tuned until the end to find out. So going down the list, we have wheatgrass, wild birdseed, brown rice, millet, popcorn, ryeberry, sorghum, red milo, and oats. For this experiment, I want to try and keep all the variables the same. I decided to do soak and simmer. I let all these grains soak for 24 hours, and then I simmered them each individually until they're fully hydrated. I make sure the grains are hydrated by taking out a few during the simmering process, and I cut them in half and observe the inside. If there's still white starch from the grain, I'll let it simmer again until it becomes more translucent looking. And now and after this, I'll dry the grains out to make sure the outside of the grains aren't wet. And then I'll load them into jars, it came out to about two quart jars worth of each grain type with 18 jars total. The jars are modified with a quarter inch hole and covered with a micropost filter. And these are ran into the pressure cooker for 90 minutes at 15 PSI. So comparing from before and after, this is how the grains look after they're fully hydrated and prepped and they're ready to get sterilized. After the jars are sterilized, I let them cool overnight and they'll be ready to inoculate the next day. The first jar we have here is wheatgrass. I'm not too familiar with wheatgrass, but they seem to be a suitable grain and they're abundant in certain areas, so I added them into the experiment. Next one we have is red milo. You can find these often mixed into bird seeds. I want to see how this does by itself. Here we have millet. This is the other half of the bird seed mix. All this grain in our trial, and my bet is probably going to be the quickest to colonize due to all the inoculation points. Here we have popcorn, it's very popular, very easy to get. You can pick it up at your local grocery store, typically cleaner than deer corn and easy to work with. Here we have brown rice, it's the OG for the Broke Boy Tech, the one that got me started. Similar to popcorn, it's food grade, easy to find. And because they're food grade, they're relatively clean. It makes them a great choice for beginners that don't have like a pressure cooker. Here's whole grain sorghum, very similar to the red milo. And here is ryeberry. This is the gold standard for mushrooms. Hydrates very well, and almost any mushroom species like it. I don't use it too much because it's pretty expensive in my area. But it's very good grain if you can get a hold of it. The eighth jar here is oats, good old fashioned whole oats, the horse feed kind. It's also another popular one because it's cheap. Uh, and the last one we have is a wild bird seed mix. This is a mix of milo, millet, cracked corn, and some sunflower seeds. Those are the grains. Let's see how they stack up against each other. I decided to split 10 milliliter syringe of culture into three jars. So it's roughly three milliliters each jar. You don't really need this much per jar. However, more culture creates more inoculation points and this will result in faster colonization. I really wanted to see how quickly the mycelium moves throughout the drain jars to get to full colonization. All these cultures were worked out on malt extract agar, and I wanted to make sure to not glade against the glass of the jars to watch the mycelium go down the side of the jars. With all jars being not glated, I set them aside on the shelf and I left them alone. Here's a quick rundown of how I do my inoculations. I make sure my gloves, my tools, and my work area is sanitized with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Then I always wipe down the jar lids and the area around it with alcohol. Doing this will go a long way in reducing your contamination rate. I always prep my jars by loosening up the lids, and when I go to inoculate them, I would open them up and inoculate, and then I close them right away. I reduce the time exposed to open air for the jars, and that will also reduce contamination rate. So I went and did this for all 18 jars, two jars of each grain. I'll go ahead and fast forward this process so we can get to the good part. Right, 
here we are, four days after inoculation. We're starting to get good clean growth across all the jars. We have wheatgrass, here's the red milo, here's our millet. Millet seems a little bit light, it's almost very similar to the red milo in terms of colonization. Here's our popcorn, popcorn is doing exceptionally well. Lots and lots of growth already compared to the other three jars. Here's our ryeberry, our gold standard grain. Seems to be doing pretty well. The growth rate seems very similar to the wheatgrass. They're kind of similar in size, so I think that might be a contribution. Here's our oats. Oats seems a little on the light side. And our brown rice. Brown rice is kind of in the middle there. Seems to be doing pretty well. A lot of my sim is taking to it. Next on the list we got sorghum. This one's doing really well. Look at that. So much growth on here. I don't know if this has more growth than the popcorn. Maybe. Looks like I underestimated sorghum. Look at that. And the last jar we have on here. Oh, there's the other jar of sorghum in the back. So yeah, sorghum's doing pretty well. And here's the bird seed. Bird seed's not, not too bad. So we got good growth across all the jars. I will check back in in a couple days and see how they're doing. Alright, 10 days later, 14 days total after inoculation. Here's how the jars are looking. At this point, the mycelium has started to adapt to their grains and they're starting to take off. They take off their colonization being very fuzzy. This is called Tomentals mycelium. As they go, they're going to start to shift form and stretch out and find more nutrients. And this type of stretchy growth is called rhizomorphic mycelium. Alright, this is about 20 days after inoculation. Here's our wheatgrass jar. As you can see, it's starting to fully colonize. It's not quite fully got the bottom. Here, red milo. The bottom's fully colonized. And it's starting to make its way around. Here's our millet. See, so we got close to. They're about touching. Almost there. And popcorn. I thought this one was going to be the slowest one because of all the spacing between the grains, but it looks like popcorn is doing really well here. So, definitely a great contender for grains. And then, whenever you go shopping at Walmart, you can just grab some popcorn and pretend that you're getting them for movies but in reality you're gonna grow mushrooms with them anyways here's ryeberry ryeberry is doing not too bad it's kind of slow so far but all the jars are looking clean here's our old jar old student very similar to ryeberry actually. Hasn't quite reached all the way around yet. There's brown rice. Brown rice looks like, uh, well, wow, it's reached all the way around and, and even more. Look at that. It's starting to get that rhizomorphic growth going along. The stringy looking mycelium there's sorghum it's doing the same thing that's colonizing just as fast as a brown rice I would say and here's our wild bird seed it's getting rhizomorphic growth as well Looks like the bottom hasn't quite fully touched, but it's getting there. Yeah, people ask about the sunflower seeds for the bird seeds. I just keep them in there. I don't, I don't find them have any issues. We're at the 20 day mark, I decided to break and shake the front jars. I decided in a real situation, this would probably be the fastest way to get full colonization. I wanted to see how quickly the mycelium recovered and worked their way back to getting fully colonized. So after the break and shake process, the mycelium continued to colonize quickly. The colonization speed was as follows. The wild bird seed was the fastest. 
followed by sorghum and brown rice, and myelin popcorn were a close third. Millet, oats, and ryeberry were about 75% fully colonized, and the last place was wheatgrass being around 70%. Uh, these are all estimations based off the visually inspecting the jars. So after 24 days total, we have full colonization on the wild birdseed jar, then the sorghum, and then the brown rice. At the 29 day mark, pretty much all the jars were fully colonized now. I then decided to break and shake the rest of the back jars because I wanted to use both of the jars for the grain spawn. So I let these consolidate for a few days and then I spawned them all out. These were spawned in 20 quart tubs in a 1 to 1 ratio of grain spawn to CVG by volume. In conclusion, brown rice was the best overall grain for the cultivation on this experiment, both in terms of colonization speed and fruiting yield. It was the fastest to reach pins as well as the harvest. The full flush was about 501 grams. However, other grains such as ryeberry and sorghum had their own advantages and produced good results as well. Ryeberry in second place with 492 grams and sorghum in third place with 429 grams. Millet, milo, birdseeds, oats, and popcorn averaged about 300 to 380 grams. Important to keep in mind that different mushroom species may have different preferences and requirements when it comes to grains, so further experimentation and research may be necessary for optimal results. Just a quick note from a recent comment, it seems people are having trouble with the colonization speed of the wild birdseed. Although it did very well in this experiment, some people were reporting that it's been slower to colonize in their own setups. This just kind of goes to show you that it's important not to solely rely on one experiment or source of information and always be open to trying and learning new things. So what I believe makes brown rice is so good is that my sim can eat it up very well. It's relatively easy to work with and it has high nutrient contents like carbs, proteins, and minerals. This supports healthy, robust mushrooms. It's pretty affordable to start out. You can find them at the grocery store. It's also less prone con to contamination than other grains because it's clean and it's food grade. Other grains, you have to soak them and sterilize them through a pressure cooker. And with brown rice, you can use these for oyster mushrooms, lion's mane, shiitake. It's very versatile. And in second place, we have ryeberry. It's also high in nutrient content. It also has a high protein. And it's also easy available in most areas. It's been the gold standard in mushroom growing. Ryeberry is more prone to contamination if it's not properly sterilized. It was a bit slower, but it made up for it when it came to yield. And with third place is sorghum. This grain did very well in colonization, speed, and overall yield. I believe one of the key things with this whole grain sorghum is that the grain didn't have a hard exterior shell. It made for an easier time for my sim to colonize the grain. It's less widely available from other grains depending on where you live, but you can find them online. Alright, now I'm making a tier list here based off of my experience with these grains. In the S tier, I would put brown rice and popcorn up there, mainly for the ease of use and access. These grains are food grade cleanliness and they provide a great yield. For A tier, we have ryeberry, sorghum, and millet. They're all very good producers for yield and fruiting, but require more attention in sterilizing. For B tier, we have oats, red milo, and the wild bird seed mix. They're cheap grains, but they still provide excellent results. And C tier is just wheat grass. It works a little slow, and it was the weakest out of the flushes. In conclusion, all the grains work, and I would suggest try out a few that you can get a hold of and see if they're a preference for your setup and the way you like to prep them. Personally, I prefer working with brown rice and millet for their ease of preparation and oats and bird seed when I'm on a budget. I hope this video provides another perspective on to the ongoing debate about grains. Leave a comment down below about which grains you prefer to use. And if you want to see the full version of this video where you can watch the other half of the experiment, you can find it on my Patreon. Your support goes a long way in helping to sustain the channel and its content. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.